Hi, oh, it's time for another math easy solution. We're going to discuss a pretty interesting topic on the inscribed angle theorem. But before we get to that, I just want to quickly go over what an inscribed angle is. Basically, the angle subtended, uh, which just means um, I'll go over that in a bit. Basically, at a subtended at a point on the circle by two given points on the circle. So subtended is basically is just a point that that has two lines meet at it like this so it's hanging kind of from somewhere so this is just being subtended at a point this one uh, on the circle by two given points on the circle in this case this point and this point and this is the angle formed so this angle is formed or subtended at this point and this is basically what an inscribed angle is and now let's get to the inscribed angle theorem, or also called central angle theorem. And basically it states that the angle inscribed in a circle is half of the central angle that subtends that same arc on the circle. I'll, get, I'll go over what a central angle is, but before I get to that, basically this relation holds only if the angles are subtended on the major arc. So what this all means is, so basically let's, let's draw a just a one example so if you have a angle here subtended like this so in this case it's subtended and now the inner circle no, basically the center of the circle is right here and then the central angle is basically subtended on this same arc so basically on these same points we draw it across to the center of it and and then the major arc is basically when you have this arc that comprises of well it's bigger than the small one and when you whenever you have these points like this whenever you have these two angles subtended this is the major arc across so this is major arc and then this is the minor arc right here I'll go over what happens when we subtend everything on the minor arc. So now that we have this one here, so this central uh, angle or inscribed angle theorem states that the angle inscribed in a circle is half of the central angle. So if this is theta, this would be, well, double this, so two theta. So basically this angle is inscribed in a circle is half of the central angle, which is two Theta. Yeah, so now in proving this, basically, uh, there's three cases to consider. This one is just one of the cases that are possible. So basically, the first uh, such case is when one of the subtended chords, uh, basically one of these lines, either this one here or this one, pass through the center of the circle and thus form the diameter. So if this one passed through the center, yeah, and basically one example of that is if, if this is the center right here, let's draw a, a line across it. So this goes directly across the center, and then this goes over here. Now, so basically this goes straight across center, so there's an angle here that's subtended. We'll call this theta, and this is subtended on the major arc. So this one right here is, is, is over here where this is the major arc all across versus inside inside here the minor arc so just wanted to get through that part so now the central angle it connects from this point and no actually i mean from this point and this point so basically it subtends onto the center right here so as you can see this subtended line to the center coincides with this uh, diameter across right here. So we also know that since this is the center, this is radius r, this passes through the center, so this is radius r, this is radius r as well. So this angle right here, we will call this, um, this, this one we'll call it theta. This is just the Greek symbol for uh, theta, and this one is alpha, uh, I mean it's theta. So theta and theta. Yeah, but now notice in this one here, since this is the radius and this is the radius, this is basically an isosceles triangle, so this angle has to be theta. And I'll write that down right here. So this is an isosceles, and I'll write that down, isosceles triangle. So basically, the we have two sides that are the exact same, so the angles inside are the same. 
So and uh, we also know that the summation of the angles inside a triangle is going to be 180 degrees. So what this means is, yeah, so this angle right here is going to be, well, 180 minus these two angles together, so 2 theta. And then basically when you add all these together, so 180 minus 2 theta plus 2 theta, that just gets 180. So we have this across here, but we also know that a straight line like this, that this is just a, one nine, a 180 degree turn as well. So we get basically 180 minus 2 theta, uh, this plus this, uh, this theta has to all equal to 180. So what this happens is this 180 is a cancel out, move this to theta on the right side. So we get theta equals to, I mean, all the way around, we get this theta equals to 2 theta. And there is our proof for the case one where, the, where we have the cord, so the subtended cord going across the center. And now this brings us to the second case where basically the center of the circle is in the interior of the inscribed angle and I'll show you what that means right here. So basically if we have this point which is subtended by these two given points on the circle right here and once again these are uh, this one here yeah this is on the major arc and this is the less arc. So the interior of the, so basically if the center of the circle, this has to coincide for the case two in the interior. So basically there is the center would be somewhere r like right there where this angle has to kind of go inside. So we have something like that. I'll just r draw this a bit better. So this is on the interior of this. So this is inside it right there. So we'll call this angle right here, we'll call this uh, just theta, I mean theta zero. And now this one here is our, we'll call this theta zero. And the reason we're calling these zero is because uh, in proving this, what we'll do is draw a line directly across this. So this would form basically that diameter. This is radius r, this is radius r. And we also have radius r here, radius r there. So we'll call this angle right here as, as theta one, and this angle across as theta two. Similarly here, we'll call this theta one, and this as theta two. So as you can see from this, if we were to look at this side only, basically, yeah, basically I'll highlight this in red. So if we look at this side across the diameter like that, and this angle across. Yeah, this this highlighted part in red, this is the exact same thing as here where you have one chord across the diameter. So in this case, we get basically, we know that this uh, theta one right here, this part has to equal, well, two times uh, theta one. This equals to two um, theta one. And this again is from uh, case one. So from case one above, so the, just from that. So we get that part, and we also have, yeah, we also have this other side, because we cut it in two, there's, a, I'll highlight this in blue. So we have in this case like that, where basically, yeah, I'll just write this right on it. So we have this exactly the same thing as case two, but on this right side, so we have this theta two has to equal basically two times theta once. Theta two equals two, theta two right there. Because we have this exact same case, one scenario where the, the uh, one of these chords goes across the center as a diameter. So we know this, and we also know that this uh, theta zero is just gonna be equal to, well, the addition of these two. So theta one plus theta two, and then if we plug these inside, this equals to two times uh, theta one plus two times theta two. Now if we take the two outer factor out, we get theta one plus theta two. And we also know from this one right here, we have the way we defined 
it basically theta zero is equal to theta one plus theta two. So this equals two, two, so basically this becomes theta naught. This is theta zero, and this angle right here is theta zero, and there is our proof for the case where you have the center in the interior of this inscribed angle. Yeah, and now this brings us to the last case where basically the center of the circle is in the exterior of the inscribed uh, angle. So basically, if this is the center of the circle, so instead of being inside like this one, we have, let's say, an angle right here, subtended across like this, and like this. So about these two points. So now the center of the circle is outside of it. We'll call this right here as theta naught, or theta zero. So now the angle subtended to the circle as you can see, the center is outside of of the uh, inscribed angle. So I'll just draw this a bit neater like that. So this angle right here, we'll call this theta naught. So as you can see, yeah, this one kind of forms a weird shape. It's very different from our first two. But like always uh, in our proof, what we'll do is draw a line across from this uh, that point right here where it's subtended so that we it forms basically a straight line across the center and we'll be using case one for our proof. So this is radius r, this is radius r, we have a radius r right here, this is also radius r. So and then uh, when we have these cases right here, I'll just erase the r just so you know now. So this again forms yeah, it forms case one. So as you can see, I'll draw this in red. So we have this this case one scenario right here. So that's a case one scenario where in this case we have over here as draw this as uh, theta. I'll call this theta two, and I'll call this right here as theta one inside. And then on this side right here, we have across here as this is going to be well theta two, and then and theta one as well is going to be inside right here. So theta one that's for the other triangle. So I mean for the other uh, case one shape, we'll draw show over in a bit. So as you can see from case one again. So from case one, we get this angle, which is going to be double this theta two. And I'll yeah, scroll back up here, so as you can see, this is the exact same angle that we have. So theta, uh, this theta, there's theta right there, and this is the exact same thing in red. So we get theta 2 equals to 2 times theta 2. Yes, yeah, so we have that part, and now for the second one is, yeah, for the second case one, I'll draw this in blue, it's across here. So from this subtended angle, subtended point across, so now we have the blue side, and then this is where we use the, uh, I'll draw this in blue actually, so this is theta 1, and this part right here, this is going to be theta 1, so as you can see, this part of the angle is the exact same as case 1, so we get theta 1 equals to 2 times theta 1, and that's from case 1 as well. So now what we could uh, write down now is what what we define basically this this theta naught. This one is slightly different than we did in case uh, two. So this uh, theta naught is equal to well, it's a subtraction of these two. So if I take this full angle, subtract it from, I uh, subtract this theta one from it. So we get theta two minus theta one because that's in between here. And this is the same thing as over here. This is theta naught, and this is theta one. And now for the same thing on this side right here, we get uh, theta naught. This equals two. This is just um, right across here. The theta two minus theta one. We just subtract it. So now what we could do is input what we have from this case one. So uh, theta naught equal two, two times the theta two minus two times theta one, and again take the two out, so factor it out. We get two times 
theta two minus theta one, which equals two right here, which equals to basically two times theta naught. So we've just proved, so theta naught equals two times theta naught right there. And we've basically just proved the third case of, of our uh, in, inscribed angle theorem. Yeah, and basically that's all for today. If you learn from this pretty extensive uh, proof video on inscribed angles, in my later video I'll go over when we have, uh, when basically instead of using the mi major arc, what happens when we are dealing with the minor arc. So basically this angle, instead of being suspended on this major one, suspended on the minor one like this, and then basically see how this angle uh, uh, is uh, dealt with uh, right there. I'll call this angle too. And this is the minor. I'll do that in, uh, in later videos, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, thanks for watching, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, and uh, stay tuned for another math easy solution.